basically you got a um, pretty standard uh, opposite stance, left on right situation happening, right? That I like to use is in ball sports, you know, we talk about position. I think in judo, gripping, gripping is essentially our position. Like we can't, we can't score, we can't score the equivalent of a goal, we can't do a throw if you don't have grips. Yeah, it's not diving. You don't just do your throw and they give you a rating out of 10. Yeah. You've got to make me fly through the air and land. Yeah. And this is going to happen first. Yeah. It's really important. And, um, um, the main thing you guys noticed in this is what Katarina scores with Koso Dagari, but only because she's shown her three Sode Tsurukomi uh, mm -hmm. Roshis before that, makes her worry about that. She's not thinking about defending Koso Dagari. You can think Katarina's style is very straightforward. If you un She wants a big, deep right hand. So to get that, she almost always posts, posts off the left collar. She does that, from what I understand, because um, that helps square up your opponent's shoulders, right? If yeah. someone's facing you front on, it's a lot easier to get a deep top grip than if you've got their sleeve and they open up that sort of 45-degree angle. So... When Katarina was giving up that lapel and sort of realised the Korean girl kept getting it over and over again, she went, okay, settled for the outside lapel, worked for that left collar to square up the shoulders and then punched through um, and got that deep grip. So after that first 30 or 40 seconds, like you said, once she sort of made the adjustment, she got the better of most of the exchanges by just being patient in a sequence of what she was looking for with the grips. So there's two instances where Sho got the inside grip and um, was kind of using it quite well. And she used, um, she had that Morote attack, which was quite dangerous at the start of the fight. And also there was kind of a drop Taitoshi. Cho's very good with this left hand defensively. But yeah, that, this is a great exchange. Um, and with that, um, yeah, and back grip that you spoke about. Elbow across Katarina's um, torso, it makes it impossible to do a forward throw. Katarina, she's she's really well drilled at this uh, against the left hander. At the start of the match, straight away after every hajime, she circles round very deep to the right, comes back in and takes control of the centre of the mat again. So one thing uh, one thing you'll notice throughout the fight is that shows actually. Um, getting the first hand on every time. Every time, yeah. Every time. Yeah, she's pushing that left hand out like a jab in boxing. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. short and sharp, and she's actually grabbing really well. Like, if yeah. you shoot your hand out that quick, it's usually pretty hard to actually grab the collar and consolidate that grip. But the Korean girl is just punching it out there and just closing it every single time almost. She's using that uh, grip break to go straight into Sodi as well, so... Every time. So she, she attacks with a right, right side Kosoto. Cho has to step off it, which means she pulls her left hand back in and creates just enough space for Hacker to attack Sode. Yeah. And the couple of times she goes for the Sode towards the end, it's also when she's either got that lapel or, or looking to feed and win the inside lapel in that Cho sort of fends her off with her elbow. And rather than having her elbow down like a standard lapel grip, in which case it's very hard to do so day, as soon as Cho starts to sort of defend with her elbow and it gets the horizontal or her elbow up, Katarina grabs it and goes straight away on that sleeve. Um, yeah, it's immediate. It's mm. I reckon it's, that there was a little down. lift. As soon as it's a little lift, right, with that elbow turns in. There was three interesting things for me. Two were uh, show you how how much Hacker is in charge of this fight. One happens at 2.45 when it's uh, Cho is, does not want to fight her on the ground. Right here. Not interested in it. And then at 4 minutes 15, Katarina does a good job of getting uh, Cho in the corner. And Cho just has to throw garbage attacks to avoid the Shido. The next exchange after that one, I like his back grip. The way she gets this back grip is quite. She's showing the shoulder. Yeah, and then yeah, she sells yeah. that high collar and stays low, especially for it, hmm. which gives her access to the back patch underneath the left arm. 
be. In terms of a couple of seconds later when she gets that score, she pushes for that so day. But if you pause it at right on 5.13, she doesn't actually step across. Her foot yeah. stays behind. So she fakes her, so the upper body goes so day, and she nah, straight away chases that back foot yep. for the co-soto, which is clever. Yeah. Ac classic action reaction, beautiful judo. Yeah. At the point in which you're engaging with your grip fight, you want to make them, by where you place your feet, step towards what you want. So say you're looking for a sleeve, you circle towards the other side, so that, for example, right versus left, I'm going to circle my left foot away to really open that angle and act like I'm going for a Kosoto, for example, because I want them to step forward so that I can attack the sleeve with my left hand. So Katarina's super disciplined in that, like when you said before how she was getting, she was always giving up the inside lapel, but instead of stepping in with her left foot, trying to get that left hand on, she would just post off with her left hand, pull the Korean girl's shoulders forward and use that to fight her way through rather than stepping into that dangerous spot. Yeah, they're both, um, they're both pretty disciplined in that um, right and left stance. Um, the, the one time Katarina did walk on was that um, with shows Moroto, and that was a bit of a danger situation. Um, and the other time was the Taitoshi. And um, show was quite disciplined all the way through in terms of not walking in the power hand direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even though we say like Katarina was getting the better of it for the majority of the fight, Cho did a really good job of not giving up anything worse than that. Like she was losing the gripping, say, 55-45 consistently, but she didn't panic and do anything silly. Um, and the one time, like you said, the one time Katarina did step forward, she went deep with that Marotte. So she was waiting for a chance, thinking, all right, if she steps eventually, eventually she's going to step in. I have to make a count. Yeah. So Cho didn't necessarily make many mistakes in terms of how this match played out. She matches. But the reality is, if you can't at this level get your best grip on your opponent, it doesn't matter how good your throws are. So a yeah, big thing that we need to, and I think a lot of the competitive coaches do try and develop early, but it, it's still it's changing in Australia, is understanding, all right, we need a basic understanding of gripping, but we also need to, each player, understand what grips or what sort of gripping process um, works best for you and gives you the best chance to then impose a judo. Um, and that's what Katarina's, you can see, it's very strict, very, like, she knows exactly what she wants and what works for her. And it may take 30 seconds, it may take five and a half minutes, but she won't change. She will stick to the three or four rules she has, maybe 10, I don't know. Um, but she knows that against any opponent, if she sticks within what she does well, she will eventually succeed. Um, and that's a huge thing that I think a lot of players can take a leaf out of her book. Even if, you, if you're the one that does the throw, right? Yes, you remember the great throw. You but you also remember the, the two minutes of pressure before that, where you were getting above and above and beyond, and eventually they gave you something up. And that's the big thing people need to take away. Like even the Russians and stuff, like you've seen, they train at a competition, they're training in a hotel corridor. They're not doing naggy commy. They're doing tiny little gripping exchanges, pressure forwards, pressure backwards, little circling activities. Come competition, they know how to throw. But what gives you the opportunity is you put in the game in your wheelhouse, if that makes sense. Um, so those little little one percenters add up a lot more. You're watching highlights videos. Quite often look at the other person in the highlights video and like, oh, that's Iliadis. Oh, that's you know, <laughs> like yeah. Look at look at Mark Anthony's highlight videos. He, how many people have got got, got a video of themselves throwing Lipa Taliani at the Olympics? Yeah. I'm curious, Mark Anthony is the only one to throw a Lipo in an Olympic competition. That's interesting. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some research on that. Um, uh, thanks again. That was awesome. Same time next week, and I'll um, I'll cut up the video in the next couple of days and post it on the weekend. Awesome, Cheers, mate. Thanks. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Cheers, boys. Cheers, guys.